Hello everyone. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this episode of CBSC Board Exam, we'll be continuing our discussion of the sample paper published by CBSC for the year 2021. The sample paper for mathematics for the year 2021 has five sections and this is the seventh video in the series for discussing the sample paper. So today's episode is really important because we're starting a new section and today's questions are sort of easy so you can keep up with the video. So be sure to watch our previous videos if you want to access those questions as well. So today we're dealing with section four. Section four contains questions of three marks each. All of these questions are compulsory in case of internal choices, attempt any one. Now for the sake of our viewers, we'll be doing both if there are internal choices. Now, the first question here is question 29. Check whether the relation R in the set Z of integers defined as R equals a comma b such that a plus b is divisible by two is reflexive, symmetric, or transitive. You also need to write the equivalence clause containing zero. So you need to write the equivalence clause and also you have to prove that the relation is an equivalence relation. So first of all, let's write the relation. So the relation is R equals the set, the element a comma b such that a plus b is divisible by two. So some steps are really important and we'll be highlighting which ones. So you need to prove that it's an equivalence relation. To prove that a relation is an equivalence relation, you need to prove that it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So let's look at reflexive first, whether this is a reflexive relation. So for a reflexive relation, the condition is that a comma a belongs to R. So that means the set containing a and the element containing a and a belongs to the relation R. So in this case, a comma a refers to a plus a, which is equal to 2a. Now 2a is divisible by 2. And since it's divisible by 2, you can see that a comma a belongs to R. So therefore, you can write that R is reflexive. Now, for proving that R is reflexive, you get half marks. Now, let's look at the next property, whether the function is symmetric. I mean, instead of its relation, not a function. So these are talking about, we're talking about relations here, not functions. So there are three types of relations, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And if a function, I mean, if a relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, then you can call it an equivalence relation. So to prove that whether a relation is symmetric, you need to, you need to be able to prove the statement that a comma b belongs to R implies that b comma a must also belong to R. So suppose an element AB is part of the relation, then you need to prove that the element BA is also an, an element of this relation. It belongs there. So how do you prove that? Well, A comma B here refers to A plus B. So let's consider a plus b is equal to 2 lambda. Now this is a condition. So we know that a comma b belongs to R, so we can write a plus b as 2 times some constant, which we write as lambda. Now then you can write a plus b as equal to b plus a, which will be equal to 2 lambda. Now this is basically the commutative property of addition. So according to this property, the order of the terms to be added does not matter in making up the final product. 
So a plus b equals b plus a equals 2 lambda. So therefore, b comma a belongs to R. That means, so 2 lambda is, again, divisible by 2 because that's why we multiplied lambda by 2 to make it divisible by 2. So b comma a belongs to R as well. So that means the relation R is symmetric. And to prove all of that, you will get one mark because the steps here are a bit longer. Now, to prove that the relation R is transitive. So, in order to prove that the relation is tra transitive, you need to be able to prove the statement that A comma B belongs to R and B comma C belongs to R implies A comma C also belongs to R. So, We'll be using the same technique with a twist for transitive. So like how we did symmetric, we'll be doing transitive. So now we'll consider a plus b as equal to 2 lambda and b plus c as equal to 2 times another constant, say mu. So now what we do is we add a plus b and b plus c. A plus B plus B plus C equals 2 lambda plus 2 mu. So A plus C plus 2B equals 2 lambda plus 2 mu. That means A plus C can be written as 2 times of lambda plus mu minus B. Now lambda plus mu minus B can be written down as a constant and whatever the value of lambda plus mu, mu minus b, this, a pl this term a plus c can be divisible by 2 because there is a 2 multiplied to it. So therefore, a comma c belongs to r. That means r is a transitive relation. So since it's symmetric, reflexive, as well as transitive, you can write that the relation R is an equivalence relation. Equivalence relation. So now that we've proved that the relation is an equivalence relation, we need to find the equivalence clause. Now, to prove that the relation is transitive, we'll fetch you another mark. And the final half mark is to ident is for identifying the equivalence clause. So basically equivalence clause of zero will be the same as the collection of elements where a plus b equals zero. So the equivalence clause for zero will contain elements from minus infinity, which are even, minus four, minus two, zero, two, four, and then that list extends on till plus infinity on the right hand side. So this is the equivalence clause for zero. And just to write this step, that will fetch you the final half marks. So you have half marks for proving reflexive, one mark for proving that it's symmetric, one mark for proving that the relation is transitive, and a half mark for proving, I mean not proving, for finding out the equivalence clause containing zero. So you have fetched your three marks for this question. Now let's look at the next question. Question number 30. If y equals e raised to x sine square x plus sine x the whole raised to x, find dy by dx. So if you look at the question, you see that y is the sum of two terms containing x in their exponents. So now what we do is we consider y to be equal to the sum of u and v, where u equals e raised to x times sine square x and v is equal to sine x the whole raised to x. So 
on differentiating with respect to x, you will get the equation dy by dx equals du by dx plus dv by dx. This is our first equation in this question. And writing all of this will fetch you half marks. So now that we have converted y into a relation with two parts, where the two parts can be separately differentiated, we will now progress in finding out du by dx as well as dv by dx. So, the value for u is u equals e raised to x times sine square x. So, differentiating, so on differentiating with respect to x, you get du by dx equals d by dx of e raised to x times sine square x. So d by dx of e raised to x will give you e raised to x times d by dx of x. That is the general formula. When you substitute that formula here, you will get e raised to x times sine square x times, I mean, e raised to x times sine square x, so that's the exponent, and then into d by dx of the exponent, so that is x times sine square x. So the sec this, this differential can be taken in terms of product rule. So since there is a product formed inside the bracket, you can use product rule in order to differentiate it. So e raised to x times sine square x into first term into the differential of sine square x. So that is g by dx of sine square x, which is which we uh, do by using the box rule. So the box rule states that d by dx of box raised to n equals n times box raised to n minus 1 times d by dx of box. So here n is 2, so 2 times box, which is sine x, raised to n minus 1, here 2 minus 1 is 1, and then d by dx of box, that means d by dx of sine x, which is cos x. And then plus, the second term is sine square x, and then it will be dx by dx. So 2 sine x cos x can be written down as sine 2x. So therefore, du by dx can be written down as e raised to x times sine square x. And then inside the bracket, you can write x times sine 2x plus sine square x. This is equation number 2. And the steps leading to this equation will fetch you one mark. Now let's look at v. v is equal to sine x, the whole raised to x. Now, in this case, you need to take the logarithm on both sides. So taking log on both sides. So this question is basically a log logarithmic differentiation question. So in most log differentiation questions, both the parts will be will have to be using log. But in this question, the first part doesn't need log, only the second part requires it. So here's how we do logarithmic differentiation. So we take log on both sides. So that means log v is equal to log sine x, the whole raised to x that is equal to x times log sine x. That means log x raised to a equals a times log x, the property. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate with respect to x on both sides. So therefore, you'll get 
d by dx of log v, that is 1 by v times dv by dx, equal to the right-hand side will be, you know, d by dx of x times log sine x. So we can write 1 by v into dv by dx as equal to, on the right hand side we use the product rule once again, so the first term is x, and then the differential of the second term. The differential of the second term is differential of log sine x. So you have two functions, the first function is log, so you write 1 by sine x because the differential of log is log x is 1 by x. And then the differential of sine x will be cos x. Now, when we take the different, then when we take the second term, that is log sine x, and then you have dx by dx, that is the differential of the first term. Now, the right hand side can be rewritten as x times cot x because cos x divided by sine x will give you cot x plus log times sine x, dx by dx will be equal to 1. So this will be 1 by v times dv by dx. In order to convert this equation to dv by dx on the left hand side, we multiply v on both sides, so on the left side it gets cancelled, on the right side you'll have an extra v. So v times x cot x plus log sine x, so that is equal to sine x, the whole raised to x, times x cot x, plus log sine x. This is equation number 3, and getting this equation will give you another one mark. So finding out u, du by dx and dv by dx is pretty important to this question. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute, substitute equation 2 and equation 3 in equation 1. So the values of equation 2 and 3 are substituted into equation 1. Let's write the equation 1 once again, so dy by dx is equal to du by dx plus dv by dx, and that can be rewritten as e raised to x times sine square x into x times sine 2x plus sine square x plus sine x the whole raised to x times x cot x plus log of sine x. This is our final answer and writing this last step will fetch you half marks, the last half mark. So you get half marks for writing dy by dx equals du by dx and dv by, plus dv by dx, where you know the values of u and v. It, you will also get one mark for differentiating u with respect to x and also v with respect to x, so doing them separately will give them one mark each. Then substituting the whole equation in equation 1, the whole values in equation 1, you will get the final answer. That will give you another half marks. So that is the structure of marks for the three mark question. We hope you found this episode interesting. We'll be back with more videos on section 4 as well as the last section, which is section 5. So until the next webisode, you can always watch our previous ones in the playlist given in the description box down below. You can also access our more useful and interesting content by subscribing to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, 
Bye-bye for now.